Hey guys, this is Hot New Pier, and I'm just gonna open up uh, intro clip. Um, you're gonna have to forgive me to get today. I'm a bit um, tired right now, a bit drowsy, so um, I might not be thinking very straight. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys pretty much how to protect uh, your open source code. I'm gonna start off with uh, just the basic um, uh, JavaScript protection example. So, um, whoops, come back here. Let's say you have a script. Ugh. Damn language things, one second. Okay. Okay. Let's say you have, I don't know, a little script here and you, you want it to, um, do something. I'm just going to use a simple alert whatever this oops is my protected script right so how do you protect something that's open source that anyone can pretty much access and whatever right um, protect sample. right well there are oh shit I just saved it as a dot JS one second <laughs> Um. All right. Anyway, um, <clears throat> how do you protect this? Well, there's a number of ways you can, you know, check the domain name that it's being called from, or whatever. Right. <coughs> One second. Um, there is a number of ways of doing this. If you have a script that you um, include it through the URL or something, right? So like uh, a make like this um, make a video decoded dot js thing or whatever, or sorry, make a video dot js thing, right? Um, what you do is you just loop through all of the objects looking for the URL or whatever. So it's pretty simple. So I'm just going to show you um, some basics. So first of all. I'm just going to create another script object. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to say, um, let's say if window dot location is not equal, um, I don't know, local post dot protect or, sorry slash protect sample dot php or whatever right or you can just check the domain name by um, using a string search or whatever you want to do <coughs> then uh, what you want to next thing you want to do is uh, say uh, put up a message or something right uh, let's say I don't know F U, don't steal. Oops. Don't steal my junk. Right. Then the next thing you want to do is go um, window dot stop. Right. What the window dot stop command does? It it um stops the rest of the page from loading or what? Uh, from loading. <laughs> but uh, not all browsers accept the window dot stop command. So. <clears throat> after that or whatever you can you know rather than window stop you can just change it to do like window dot location equals whatever your website or something right right so I'm just gonna show you how that looks um, I'm gonna change the URL there slightly right and it doesn't even load the page because it's right at the top right if you don't steal my junk right press ok and it does nothing right 
So if my browser were to not accept the window.stop command, what would happen is the window would it would forward it to your um, website or whatever, right? Get rid of this. And it should, you know, it's forwarding me my, now, but I don't have any internet right now. So, yeah, some noob could go, in, go ahead in and just, like, um, you know, remove it or whatever. But if you have something that's advanced, you could just plant this everywhere, right? Um, <clears throat> and to prevent string searches and stuff like that, you can just put in a bunch of random, um, you know, pluses and whatever, right? Or you can even put it in an array, you know, encrypt the string, decrypt it, do whatever you want. Now, the next step is pretty simple. You put it through a packer function. So, I'm just going to be using my own little packer function here. Right, your JavaScript packer. You can use um, Ding. Uh, Edwards Packer, I think that's his name. I'm just going to use my own here. Right. And just paste it. Right, as you can see, you're like, it's a bit confusing how all of the data is in, right? You see like HTTP or whatever. I'm ho I'm hoping that that was the correct version of my packer, the one that works. Anyway, localhost. Um, uh, where is it? Yeah, here we are. The uh, chat. That totally was not my correct version, was it? Yeah, that totally was not the right one. <clears throat> One second, I'm just going to pop. Okay, sorry about that. That was just a little issue with um, the regular expressions that I used in my packer. Anyway, you know, pack it. Paste it, right? Um, if you're using my version of the packer or whatever, uh, one second, I'm just going to get rid of these alerts here. Um, get rid of that. Anyway, if you're using my version of the packer, you can pack it more than once. Um, I'm sure you can do it with Dean Packer, but uh, with Dean Edwards Packer. But um, <coughs> the difference is with my packer, um, it's a bit different. Anyway, whatever. So you can pack it more than once. It really doesn't matter, um, right? Um, I guess you could do it more than once. Anyway, right? You just take that little bit or whatever. It's so, you know, a little bit. And all you do is you copy and paste that all over the script or whatever. And then, you know, you just pretty much obfuscate the code as much as you can. And um, a, an average noob or whatever wouldn't write, uh, wouldn't get it right away, right? Um... So, you know, that's pretty much it, right? So, because uh, if someone can, um, you know, figure out all of this crap or even just go through all that effort just to remove their, your whole, um, you know, anti uh, script stealing thing, they might as well just be making it themselves, right? So I don't think anyone would do that if they had the ability to. Anyway, uh, this is Hot Noob. Come check out my blog. And sorry, I'm like not thinking very straight right now. Anyway, see you guys later.